This whole thing was created out of James' imagination. I just love that open air environment at Roundtop, the warmth, the sun. I've spent lots of weekends out there, nights, not just for programming, but just to, to be there and to soak up the magic of the place. Round Top is such an extraordinary place, and it's because it's the creative brainchild of James Dick, who is a great musician and a great pianist and a great teacher and mentor to so many, great performer. Nobody forgets their time at Round Top, which is pretty amazing. James Dick was raised on a farm in Hutchinson, Kansas. He showed an early interest and aptitude in the piano and wowed audiences, including De Los Franz, at the University of Texas. Franz, a renowned pianist who was teaching at UT, instantly recognized James's prodigious talent and eventually taught him as an undergrad. After James Dick was graduated with honors from the University of Texas, and after his Fulbright scholarship for two years, and after his year on the competition circuit, including the Tchaikovsky, he was a touring concert pianist. During that time, he had breaks in the action, and during one of those, he decided to go back and visit his professor, Dalius Franz, at the University of Texas. And Dalius was there, and he said, listen, hey, tomorrow, I gotta go down to Houston and meet with Ima Hall. So they go down to Houston, and Dolly's turns to James and says, James, why don't you tell Miss Hyma about your dream? So James went ahead to discuss what would turn out to be Festival Hill. He explained, you know, he thought this thing through, and then at the end of it, he told Miss Hyma, he said, one thing I've been tossing around about is where to have it. And Miss Hyma said, how about Round Top? He came up here, looked around, and fell in love with the place. In 1971, James founded the Round Top Festival Institute, featuring 10 piano students and two concerts in the old courthouse building. In 1974, James purchased the land that became the permanent home for Festival Hill. When you first started, this place was really a mess. It was just, just all piles of junk and it had to be dealt with. And in the mornings, the first thing they did when they came to work every morning was clear a little junk. I can remember they were trying to get their first dormitory ready for the summer festival. And I was cleaning windows with a one-edged razor to try and get the decals off so that it would be ready in time. But I remember one of the very most special times, and this was in the late 70s. Jimmy was performing on the porch of Clayton House, the first major property that was renovated on campus. He and Yo-Yo Ma did a duet that was absolutely phenomenal. And I knew then that this was a magical place. Over the years, James and his team built and expanded Festival Hill into a 200-acre campus. Many of the buildings have been picked up and moved from somewhere else. And the centerpiece, the 1,000-seat concert hall, is breathtaking and intimate and unlike any other in the region. I can remember the board meeting at which he recommended and suggested the concert hall. And those of us who were used to this small, magical little treasure couldn't imagine a concert hall of that grandeur and expanse. It's one of the best concert halls in the world, really, truly. The acoustics are phenomenal and it is so beautiful, all made by local craftsmen. Today, the Institute has a global reputation and hosts many events year-round, including poetry festivals, theater performances, and more. But the main focus is on the students. The primary and, I guess, most significant program of the festival is the Summer Institute. About 80 to 100 students come in from all over the world. Conductors come in. Faculty come in to conduct master classes. The students learn a new repertoire every week. They have a new conductor and a new program and they start practicing on Monday nights and give a performance on Saturday. It's six weeks of intense 
training and teaching. They learn the challenges of being in a professional orchestra where that's exactly what orchestra members do. They have a new program every week and they perform right away. When a festival such as ours is constantly growing in quality and stature, then that's what matters. And we're beginning to see that because now we have alumni on six continents, gainfully employed, teaching, performing in some of the most wonderful orchestras. I remember hiring my then principal trumpet in the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. This is a very uh, important, prestigious musician in the world of classical music in America. And uh, when we hired him in Atlanta, he reminded me that the first time we had met was when he was playing principal trumpet for me at Round Top. James is still the touring concert pianist. Jimmy, he comes to life when he's playing his concerti with orchestra, and you feel that communion with the orchestra. He has such a gifted touch. He plays lightly, but significantly and is such a great interpreter of the music he plays. One of my favorite memories is hearing Beethoven's Piano Concerto Number no. 5, The Emperor, where I was about row 8 or 10 and I could see his hands moving along the keyboard and the music came alive. I feel love, I feel healing, I think that is what classical music does for people. And more than anything else, it is true soul music. And it reaches your soul, it permeates your being, it uh, transforms you. But also, what makes Round Top very special is you see these young people up there performing and you realize that their lives have been transformed, young people who will have a different life because of Round Top. And that is what I call true immortality. It's hard to put him in a particular slot in the pantheon of great American pianists. Jimmy has had wonderful teachers, and I think by nature he's an educator. He wants to help students achieve what he's achieved. He's an innovator, he's a visionary, he is an artist, he is an absolute jack of all trades. The reason that James is important to Texas on the surface, he's a great, and will go down in history, as a great concert pianist who has played and entertained people all around the world. But beyond that, he is a man who, in his profession of music, he has done so much for so many people to make them learn music and enjoy music and stick with a career in music. When one thinks about great performers, they come in so many varieties. There are the, the great recital players, there are the great concerto players, there's the virtuosos who specialize in certain repertoire. And then there's the really rare breed, for me, that James Dick emblemizes. For his efforts in establishing a world-renowned classical music institute in the heart of Texas, and for sharing his love of music with the world, tonight, we honor James Dick as a history-making Texan.